whole thing, dude. Oh my gosh. Navy pilots were shocked when they encountered these unidentified flying objects in 2015. Wow. Okay. <laughs> these videos soon went viral, and conspiracy theorists wasted no time in claiming this was finally proof of aliens. Does our government know more? They know a lot more. Wow, there's these things in the sky. Well, it's much bigger than that. But not all scientists are sounding the cosmic alarm. So far, we haven't found anything that we've been able to recognize as that's an intelligent alien. The way we're going to find that out is not through grainy footage or a couple of pixels that we can't make out. In fact, the search for extraterrestrial life may not be so much about seeing, but listening for aliens. This is a radio telescope. We're looking for radio transmissions that would be coming from an alien civilization. Our world is pretty loud. Detecting signals from deep space with all that interference is incredibly difficult. So we went to one of the quietest places in the U.S., where scientists are trying to answer a question that's fascinated humanity for a long time. Are we alone? We have been visited on this planet. What I'm telling you is real. When it comes to aliens, there's some things I just can't tell you. Touch on confirmed. There may be other intelligent civilizations. This is Just Might Work a show about surprising solutions to our biggest problems. And then the first thing we'll do when we get on the dish is I have to go do the safety thing. That prevents the um, telescope from moving. While we're on it. While we're on it, yeah. This 1,300 square mile area is the National Radio Quiet Zone. It's home for people who claim to have electromagnetic hypersensitivity. This uber secret NSA outpost and the world's largest fully steerable radio telescope Scientists need absolute silence to listen to radio waves coming from deep space. So in the NRQZ, cell phones don't work, Wi-Fi isn't readily available, and microwaves are scarce. Even the slightest interference can drown out extremely faint signals originating light years away. Radio waves are really just a form of light that have a different energy than the light that we can see with our eyes. These are what we call receivers that take the radio waves coming from space, and they basically allow us to convert them into electrical signals. The Green Bank Telescope is 100 meters in diameter, which is 2.4 acres of collecting area. It's massive, but what makes this telescope so unique is that it's fully steerable, allowing researchers to point it at nearly every inch of the universe. The radio signals that we're trying to pick up from space are extremely, extremely weak. It's kind of like casting a net. The bigger the dish, the bigger the net, the weaker the signals that you can pick up. And this is important when listening for radio waves that may be a billionth of a billionth of a watt. That's about 20 billion times less than the power of your watch. The hope? Finally answering the question if intelligent life exists off our planet. If someone is actively speaking to us, or actively sending a message in the radio across the universe, if we didn't listen, if we didn't search for them because we didn't find it easily the first time we looked, how much would we be shortchanging ourselves through our own short-sightedness? This is my colleague, Ethan, an astrophysicist and writer at Big Think. For as long as humans existed, we had these enormous existential questions. If we discover that we're not alone in the universe, that would change forever how we viewed life on planet Earth and throughout the universe. So the big questions now are taking those next steps. And right now we have three ways at the frontiers of modern science that we're looking for our first signs of life that originated beyond Earth. The first way is we are sending probes throughout our solar system. The second way is we are examining these exoplanets. Can we find what we call biosignatures? Is it an oxygen-rich world? Does it have water vapor and carbon dioxide? And then the third way we have of looking for life is the most ambitious one of all. It's looking for what we call techno-signatures, the signatures of a technologically advanced, intelligent alien species that is attempting to communicate with us. Radio telescopes are the best way to listen for technosignatures. Perhaps the most intriguing detection in the search for aliens was the WOW signal. In 1977, researchers discovered a low frequency signal with no rotation that lasted 72 seconds. It's exactly what astronomers expect other civilizations to transmit. 
Since then, we've detected hundreds of radio waves in space. Most are naturally occurring, others still remain a mystery. UFO sightings will always capture our imagination. And while we haven't found solid proof of extraterrestrial intelligence, researchers are becoming increasingly convinced that we'll hear aliens before we see them. The odds of success are difficult to predict, but we know that they're zero if we don't even try. We've also really only looked at the nearest few hundred star systems. So the more we invest in listening, if someone's actually out there trying to say hello, the greater the chance we have of not missing them. And we're even starting to expand our reach into outer space beyond just listening. Researchers are now working to send our own interstellar messages into space in hopes that something or someone is listening just like we are. And making contact could change life here on Earth. How many of them have held the fate of the planet in their hands or whatever they have instead of hands? Have they overcome the problems that are facing us today in our technological infancy? Have they overcome fighting and war and poverty and inequality and disease? If the answer to that is yes, that has profound implications for not only how we live our lives today, but for the possible future that we know is suddenly available to us if we can just get it right.